Hey, what is up? I'm the athletes. If you have not registered yet for the 2019 Future of Sport Conference, do it today. Go to live.theomniathlete.com. This conference is truly going to transform the way you look at sport, the way you compete in sport. And if you are a coach or a leader who's working to bring sports consciousness into your team, into your organization, into your client base, whoever it is that you serve, and you need help building that bridge in translating the practices of higher consciousness, the practices of meditation, mindfulness, EFT, training principles around energetics and embodiment, and how that all translates into athletic performance and in a way that you can communicate its value, and by extension, the value you deliver in being able to to bring that work to sport and to the world, this is the conference for you to be at. We are gonna have an incredible list of speakers and teachers that all have gone through the journey of translating that work, that value, that power into athletic performance and into peak performance for sport, for life, through movement. So be there July 19th through 21st in San Francisco, the Future of Sport Conference. Go to live.theomniathlete.com to register today. Grab your ticket. We'll see you guys in San Francisco. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Omni Athlete. We created this show and company to empower your performance with the wisdom and techniques of the world's highest achieving body, mind, and spirit competitors. Okay, so today's guest is a motivational speaker, athlete, and coach who reached the 600 win mark faster than any other high school coach in California state history. His laundry list of accomplishments as a steward of the transformational power of basketball includes being the only prep coach in state history to win a state championship at two different schools, being named the West head coach in the prestigious McDonald's All-American game in 2014, and being named National High School Coach of the Year by Student Sports in 2000. As a speaker and thought leader, he has traveled the world leading clinics for elite athletic brands like Nike, using these opportunities to share his message of the winning edge. It's my pleasure to introduce to Omni Athlete, Frank Aloko. Welcome to the show, Frank. It's a pleasure to be here. I really am enjoying this. Looking forward to a, a nice, lively discussion here. So as we were getting ready for this conversation, Frank, we started with this idea off camera of using sport to transform the world. And I think that's a perfect place for our t- conversation to start. So what does that phrase mean to you? Well, I think, you know, the sports is a unifier. I know uh, Pope Francis created an initiative uh, a couple of years ago called Sport at the uh, Service of Humanity. And uh, I got involved in that. And I was really impressed with it. And when I went and listened to, you know, what the, the Pope's message is that we're all different, but there's a unifier and it's sport. You know, sport can be this unifier that brings people together. And, and as I sat with him, as I did with your organization, and when I sat down with that group and listened to their mission and thought, this really is speaking to me because it's kind of what I've always believed that it is a difference maker in many people's lives. There's so many unique things that can be taught on the playing fields that you can't quite, you know, learn in a classroom and that, you know, the things that go into being a great player um, are the same that would go in to being successful at anything. And it starts on the greatest team you'll ever be on your family. So what are some of those characteristics, those traits, those, especially on the character side, those aspects of ourselves we can develop through basketball and through sport? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I did some clinics over in Beijing, China, and I was asked uh, an interview. I was asked, what's the most important skill in the game of basketball? And I said, love. Mm-hmm. And the reporter came back and said, no, no, I mean a basketball skill. And I said, I know, I mean love. <laughs> and uh, third time they said, no, we mean re- rebounding, shooting, defending, passing. I said, love, you know, and I and I really meant that, that I think that's a force that really is very and very important. I think being a great teammate really is what it's all about. You know, you look at a team like the Warriors, you know, uh, I don't know that people really appreciate what they did, you know, in losing uh, their one of their greatest players of all time and Kevin Durant, you know, I had a chance to coach in the uh, Jordan All-American game in 2000. And it's a lose of player of that magnitude. And they still compete because the culture was so strong. And then you saw a glimpse of how, unique that was, I always say you try to find a moment of passion every day. And my moment of passion that day was Kevin Durant trying to play, you know, risking his career, you know, for his friends being the ultimate teammate, you know, and, and then you look at 
what happened with Clay, you know, and how they responded after the injury. They still had a chance to win that game. And if they go to a day, game seven, they still have a shot, you know, even though you're losing two of the finest players in the league, because at the core, there's a culture of love and, and the power of love is not discussed enough. You know, we hear about all the time about, you know, a mom who's 120 pounds who lifts a car off her child, you know, and how does that happen? You know, it happens because that's the most important thing in the world to that woman. And I think that's what we see through sport. You know, how important is it to you to serve your friends? How important is it to be in your family? And I tell kids that, you know, I was a coach that valued those skills and kids. It was never about talent to me. It was really about your ability to love. What were you willing to do for your friends? Are you willing to put in the extra time? Are you willing to get a backside rebound? You know, when we used to coach help side, we used to say, don't say I got your help. I got your help. I got your back. I got your back. Because if you make a mistake, I'm going to be there for you. So I think that's really not talked about enough. And great teams have that culture at the core of it. It really isn't talent so much as it is this this thought of, I won't let you down. I will love you and do whatever you need to help you be successful. You know, love is such a, a consistent theme in these conversations. And what what would be really fun right now, Frank, for you to, to share a little bit of what you've seen and experienced is I, I think sometimes coaches, especially and, and athletes too, I, younger, younger athletes more and more, I think they understand right away what you're saying with love. But for a lot of times, it's a concept that we don't necessarily think of in relation to hard work, intensity, grit, some of these other characteristics that really do show up when you're competing at your edge. And in your experience as a coach and also as a player, where does love show up in really allowing you to work hard towards being the best version of yourself? Well, you know, I'll I'll use an example. When I was at Northgate High School, a team that did not have a lot of success prior to our arrival there, and and we went in there with high aspirations, you know, as a team that did not have a lot of success with 7 and 19 the year before. And we sat down with those kids and said, we're going to be state champs here. You know, and we're going to do it through a commitment to each other, you know, through finding guys that want to be good friends and play together and do things on your own. You know, I remember we opened the gym. We didn't open the gym. We had kids play outside. You know, we had kids play outside. And and because we wanted that mentality of we're tough and we play outside, you know, and, and the kids ran their own workouts. You know, they did open gyms on their own and they did things. So we empowered them. And you know, you never know if the kids are getting the, the message. And until about my second year there, second or maybe third year there, uh, my son was a pretty good player. He ended up as point guard at St. Mary's College and runs a very big youth program now in the Bay Area. And great, great role model for kids. And, and at that time, we used to do every drill we did was competitive. And he didn't lose very many drills. He, was, he, wasn't a, he wasn't a big kid. He wasn't very strong. He wasn't very quick. He doesn't jump very high. He took after his mom, by the way. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, what he did have was this love for his teammates and this competitiveness and the love for pressure. And he was doing a drill, and, and it was the end of a game, and we had a transfer that come to our school, and there was a loose ball with about four seconds to go, loose ball. All he had to do was dive on the ball and the drill was over and their team would have won. But he went over and he sort of leaned over to pick it up. Someone else dove on top of the ball, tipped it to someone, threw it down the other end. They scored at the buzzer. And they, we used to have, if you won, you did push-ups. If you lost, you ran a set of lines, right? And so kids were going to do their push-ups and kids were going to run the set of lines. And I overheard my son say to this young man, he said, can I ask you a question? Why didn't you dive on that loose ball for me? And the kid didn't answer him. And he said, no, that, that's a question requires an answer. He said, why didn't you dive on the floor for me? And the boy didn't answer again. He said, I know you're new here, but I want you to know that I will do anything for you. I will dive on the floor. I'll run through that wall. I'll run through that stone column. Whatever you need me to do for you, I will do. Now, can I expect that of you? And when I heard him say that, I said, we got it. You know, these kids are understanding the culture of who we are. And that's really what we were at Northgate and subsequently at De La Salle. We had kids who really believed that. And the, and what you what you see, you know, the rest of the story would be those kids are adults now and they are the best of friends to this day. And all of those kids, you know, have gone on to be very successful. And I can't tell you how many times I get that comment of this. I'm just implementing the things that I was taught, you know, at Northgate or at De La Salle, which was commitment to each other, 
love, you know, giving your best effort, competing at the highest level that you're capable of. Not so much about having incredible talent as much as we're going to we're going to do this together. We are a band of brothers. It seems that story is so powerful because I can tell, right, that you you were able to see that the culture wasn't going to be something that, that you and your coaching staff had to lead and champion, but rather facilitate, right, that the players were ready to really own it. And I wonder, you know, what's what do you think allowed that to take hold? And, you know, you did this in multiple places. So what were kind of the key characteristics that allowed that culture to be something driven from the ground up, so to speak, rather than purely from the top down? I think you have to coach attitude. You know, you have to, kids don't get enough good stuff anymore. You know, they used to get it in church. You know, they used to get some lessons in the classroom, you know, and they you had moms and dads that were able to eat with their children at dinner time. And you now you had so many different spaces that kid got good kids would receive good information. Well, a lot of those areas are not there now. It's not there. You know, we aren't don't go to church as much. And we have working parents, which we have to do to survive. And and, uh, you know, uh, the, the schools can't teach morality and things like this. And the, the stuff we watch on TV, it, it sort of um, confirms that you're supposed to not act a good way. You know, where I was lucky when I grew up, you know, the TV shows I watched all had a moral lesson at the end. And it was be nice to people. You know, I preached to my grandchildren. I take them on a walk through my hometown in New Providence, New Jersey. And I'll, I'll be walking the kids around. I say hello to everyone. And one day my little granddaughter said, Papa, do you have to say hello to everybody? And I said, well, I do, Molly, because, you know, I'm older now and, and I may know those people, but I haven't seen them in 40 years. I said, but I also do it because it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Right. So you teach these lessons to kids. And we used to do that every day. We called them attitude cards. We'd give our team a card. In fact, my Father's Day weekend was incredible because Justin Joyner, an assistant coach at St. Mary's College, actually on Twitter, you know, put out a motivational card that I had given him probably when he was a sophomore in high school. And he still had it, you know, and I think all those little things help to frame the way they think. And uh, they refer to those things. And they just didn't come in with these attitudes. They had to be crafted. And they knew that it was important. And they also know they 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 kind of knew what I valued and they became those things and understood that if I act this way and do these things, I'll play, you know, more than it would be for talent. You know, I often say the things that I valued more than anything in the world was being a great teammate. And so at my camp, I preached to the young, the young boys and girls that if that's something that a fairly successful coach valued, well, why don't you practice that? You can practice being a great teammate at home. Yeah, every time you help your mom take the groceries out, you know, you're being a great teammate. You know, you do something for your little brother. You're kind to your little brother. You clean up after yourself. You make your bed. You do all these things. And I always tell the kids at camp, I'm going to give you a homework assignment on Wednesdays because Wednesday is the day we teach the help side defensive stance, the friendship stance, we call it. And we tell the kids on Wednesday to go home and do something for your family that you've never done before. And when mom or dad asks you what you, why you're doing it, say, I'm just working on my help side stance. I'm trying to be a great teammate. So I think it has to be taught. It has to be preached. And it should be at the core of any program. Any leadership program should have teaching attitude and coaching people. You know, there's tons of motivational stuff out there. But what are you using to fulfill the philosophy of what you believe in and being true to your core? Where has that philosophy come for you, both from the sports, the athletic career that you had, and then also just in life? What's really allowed that to be become such a solid and consistent foundation for you? That's an outstanding question. It really is. And I, I'm very lucky. You know, my mother and father, you know, uh, raised four boys. My dad's still with us. He's 94 years old. My mom's approaching 90. And uh, my father's still a volunteer fireman. You know, he's been that since he was in his 20s. He was the police chief. He was the fire inspector. And uh, now he's the vice president. He still goes to all the meetings. He's still a service oriented guy. So well, they, they did work at the church. You know, they were always involved in, in, in volunteer work. So we always were taught that sense of that, you know. And, um, and then I was really blessed to have outstanding high school coaches. Uh, they're still my best friends. I speak to them quite regularly, at least, you know, once every couple of weeks. I call my high school basketball coach, my high school football coach who's still alive. And, and the other day I was discussing uh, 
from politics with one of my coaches. And I said, Hey, I, I got all this from you. Anything I believe in, you know, in, in things that was instilled by you, you know, and, and it really was true. And then I went to Notre Dame and I met, you know, one of the greatest mentors of all time, coach Ara Parsegian. And he was unbelievable. I mean, to, to be around that man, I often say that, you know, I was the number two quarterback there. And I often say, if you told me I could go somewhere else and be the starting quarterback and all American NFL star, I would have said, I would not trade my experience for the lessons I learned every day from that man. And I'll tell you one, one story, which I think was, was just find who he was. And when you talk about coaches as role, as role models, that's who we are. You know, anybody can say the words you want to live the words. That's really the most important thing. You know, um, I just told my team at work today how, you know, St. Francis said, preach every day, use words when necessary. You know, you, you preach by your actions. And Coach Parsegan was the ultimate model of that. In 1972, we played in the Orange Bowl against the number one team in the country, Nebraska, with David Hum and Johnny Rogers. Uh, incredible football team, one of the best I've ever seen. We lost 40 to six. It's one of the worst losses in Notre Dame history. And Coach Parsegan walked in the locker room afterward and he said, gentlemen, I want you to remember this as long as you live. Adversity has the effect of eliciting talents which under prosperous conditions might have remained dormant. And he walked out of the room and we were left with those words. And those words became our battle cry. Adversity has the effect of eliciting talents which under prosperous conditions might have remained dormant. And our team came together and we weren't the most talented team, but we became one of the most loving teams in history. In fact, to this day, we are the best of friends, all of us. And we worked hard that summer and we found out things that we didn't even know we were capable of, but that adversity had brought out of us. We worked harder. We lifted harder. We loved harder. We came back the next year, won 11 games, beat Alabama in the Sugar Bowl, 24, 23 to become national champions. But the rest of the story was years later when my father called me and said, you got to watch 60 Minutes tonight. And, you know, he's in New Jersey. I'm here, three-hour time difference. He said, there's a profile on your coach. And I said, well, what, what's, what's, what do you do? And he said, just watch. So I watched the TV show. It's on 60 Minutes, and he's talking about his grandchild was playing on the playground and having issues with his coordination, kept falling down, and the school uh, sent a note home, sent him home and said, you might want to get him checked out. And they get his son checked. He sent him to the Mayo Clinic. They find out that he has neiman Pixi syndrome. It's a neurological disease where your body doesn't process cholesterol, overtakes your body functions. It's incurable. Um, so they get this awful news. There's only one researcher in the world researching at that time. They, to further complicate it, they tell him it's a genetic disease. You must test all your grandchildren. Coach had four grandchildren, three have it. So he was going to lose his grandchildren. So Coach Parsegan gave up everything. He gave up his life as a broadcaster. You know, he was going to find a cure for this. He started traveling around the country, speaking, uh, hosting golf events. I went to one in Berkeley, and I got five minutes alone with Coach, which I treasure to this day. And he was telling me the story of, of this. And he said, you know, Frank, I can't save my grandchildren, but I dedicate my life to make sure no parent or grandparent ever has to go through what our family's going through. I said, sort of like adversity has the effect of eliciting talents, which under prosperous conditions might have remained dormant. He lit it up. He said, I taught somebody something. I said, coach, if you ever knew everything I ever am or ever will be, I owe to the lessons I learned from you. Because he was a real model, a real mentor, just didn't say the words. He lived it. And to the day he died at 94 years old, all of us cherished him. He was the coach to the day he died. And, you know, I think all of us is challenged, whether it's as a parent, as a coach, as a business owner, as a leader, to model that kind of leadership, because that will stay in you forever. Our coach is gone, but he's not gone. You know, I try to be the embodiment of him when I coached. I try to do everything he did. I had every sign in the locker room, play like a champion over the door. I had, you know, your number is 14. Make us number one. When you leave here, that will be remembered. I did everything he did. And it works. And that's what I think coaches and mentors have to understand. What's funny to me, Josh, is we know exactly what works in America and no one's willing to do it. And if you do it, then you'll have success and you will you'll reap the rewards well beyond what you would ever imagine. It's a real simple for, uh, formula of love at the core of everything and playing hard and being accountable to each other. Wow. Frank, this has been 
absolutely incredible. But before I ask my final question, where can these guys go if they want to connect with you or your camp online? Well, you know, I'm on Twitter at Coach Alaco. So um, I, I, I do, I do a, a monthly newsletter for kids uh, through the ultimate uh, field house. If you put an ultimate field house coaches corner, it'll come up. Kids can subscribe. Adults can subscribe. It's free, you know, and uh, just something I want to give back. And I'll tell you how that happened. If you, you got a quick second, I was, at, Please. I was at Venice beach after the season, I would always take some time to unwind. And I was in Venice beach and I met a guy selling um, uh, books and paintings along the beach, along the boardwalk. And we started talking. I started sharing in my philosophy with him. And he told me, he said, you need to spread this word. You know, you, you're, you're coaching at a, at a you know, you're, you're doing some great things at De La Salle, but you're only touching, you know, 45 kids. You need to expand this. You need to write a book. You need to do something to get the word out. And that's where the genesis of this, you know, these newsletters come out to share the word with more people. So I would love to have people subscribe to it. Like I said, it's free. There's motivational stories in there that can be used with kids, but also hopefully inspire kids to want to be more. That's great. Frank, so th- this show is called Omni Athlete because we want to understand what it takes to be the ultimate mind, body, and spirit competitor. So the final question of the show for you is what does being an Omni Athlete mean to you? Uh, I think an omni athlete transcends time. You know, it's someone that really buys into the concept. It's not, you don't turn on and off energy and effort. It's something that should be there every day. You know, I'm an old man now, right? I'm Papa, right? I have five grandchildren, but I still see an athlete in the mirror. You know, I still try to stay in shape. I still try to do the things that I did, but I can't do them as well as I used to, but the heart's there you know, and the spirits there and the trainings there and the disciplines there and trying to do the things that I've always done, you know, and, and I think at the core of an on the athlete, you're true to yourself. You know, people will say, well, Hey, my coach is being unfair to me. So I'm going to react this way. No, no, no. You act the way you act. No one should change what you believe. Your principles should be, should define who you are and you live those principles every day of your life. And being an omni athlete just doesn't mean I do this for the short time during my playing period, because after you're done playing, you got another 60 years, you know, and what are you going to do? Are you going to look back at your memories and tell people what you did when you were in high school? Or are you going to continue to be a life changer and a great teammate that inspires others to raise their level up to change the world one player at a time? Frank, thank you for being on the show. Oh my gosh, guys, please go dive deep into Frank's world. Go subscribe to his newsletter. Anything you can do to get in his orbit in terms of the information and philosophy that he's sharing and he's just experienced, please reach out. This is not just word or theory. It's truly been applied and the results of it have been experienced time and time again. And it is so true and core to what we're trying to do here at Omni Athlete, which is to empower you to be the best version of yourself through sport. And that's what Frank has dedicated his life to. So go connect with him, dive into his world. And until next time, thank you for listening to this episode of Omni Athlete. Hey, hey, what is up, guys? Thank you for watching another episode of Omni Athlete. Please, please, please go like and subscribe to our podcast. That is our goal right now is just to build this community as big as we possibly can. And we need your help to do it. So like and subscribe, share our content. Guys, if if this content adds any value to your world that helps you perform, connect, go deeper, go wider, whatever it is that it does for you, if it provides value, all we ask is that you share our content and help grow this community. We can't accomplish our goal of elevating global consciousness through sport without you. You are an integral part of this mission and this purpose and we need your help so please go like subscribe and share our content and continue to help us build and grow this community that is truly motivated to not just elevate consciousness but elevate and shift the very culture of sport so that we can truly experience the athletic experience in a brand new and energizing way for so so many people guys so thank you and please like and subscribe until next time